Hi everyone, in today's video I'll be showing you yet another way to connect FireWire devices like this camcorder without the need of these expensive adapters. At the start of 2024, Apple discontinued the Thunderbolt to FireWire adapter, which was required in all of the past solutions I've shown, and although the Thunderbolt 1 and 2 to Thunderbolt 3 and 4 adapter is still available, it wouldn't surprise me if that one gets discontinued soon as well. Although Apple still supports these connections on even their newest Mac computers, on the Windows side, we've been seeing Intel drop support for Thunderbolt 1 and 2 devices, which means FireWire connections using this method no longer work. Every day it seems like somebody is finding their long lost camcorder in a box of mini DV tapes and they're eager to get them copied to a computer, and they come across my videos for help. But as the required adapters start going out of stock and newer computers stop supporting these legacy devices, I'm now recommending a new approach. To start, you'll need a computer from the 2000s. You may already have one of these in your basement or grandparents house, and if you don't already have one, check your local thrift store, Craigslist, Marketplace, or eBay. I'll put a link to a few options you can buy on Amazon for refurbished models, which I verified have built-in FireWire, but in my case, I bought this Dell XPS from 2007 for only 30 bucks, and all I needed was to add a hard drive. I already had a monitor, keyboard, and mouse from the same time period, which were a perfect match for this setup. So what computer should you buy? Well, let's first talk about Macs. I personally think these were the best option since Apple put FireWire ports on board pretty much all of their models for over 10 years, so they should be easier to find. Depending on if the Mac has FireWire 400 or 800, all you'll need is the appropriate cable to go from the small FireWire 400 four pin connection on your camcorder to either the FireWire 400 six pin or FireWire 800 port to make the connection on the computer. The software to capture mini DV and HDV is also built in. All you'll need is iMovie to import the footage, which I've shown in my past videos. Now let's talk about PCs. There was only a small gap of time where PC manufacturers started including FireWire ports on board, trying to compete with the multimedia capabilities available on Macs. These systems are harder to find, but try looking for business-grade laptops or desktops geared towards multimedia use at home, like this Dell XPS I found. There's pros and cons no matter which option you pick, so you'll have to decide what's best for you. If you can't find a PC with FireWire on board, try looking for a laptop with an Express card slot or PCM CIA card slot. Or, the good news is that almost any desktop with available expansion slots can be upgraded with FireWire card. You'll first need to determine if your PC uses PCI or PCI Express cards. These cards are available on Amazon and inexpensive. I'll have some links down in the video description to a few different options which should work for you. Doing this process on Windows is more difficult and may be more time consuming depending on how knowledgeable you are with older computers. I spent weeks troubleshooting the issues with the system I found, only to discover that the system might have been water damaged, leaving some components like this RAM stick faulty, which caused random shutdowns and error codes when booting. I also had challenges determining which operating system was best. This system shipped with Windows Vista, which everyone knows was a disaster, so my thought was to use Windows XP, but I had troubles even getting the install started. I then pushed the limits and see if I could get the latest Windows 11 installed, and while it did work, it was unusably slow. Windows 7 seemed like a good choice, but I constantly ran into random errors and crashes which in hindsight might have been related to the faulty RAM module I found. I ended up settling with Windows 8.1, and although it has an annoying start screen, it was the best balance of modern features and good performance. The PC I bought has a 6-pin FireWire 400 port on both the front and back, so I first started testing with these. I had success with the front port, but ran into issues when I tried the back port. I couldn't get the back port to work, and I noticed my cable was getting really hot. From that point forward, I could no longer get the FireWire connection on my camcorder to work, even when I went back to using a known good cable on a known good system. My hypothesis is that there was either something wrong with this port on the back of the computer that ended up short-circuiting something on the camcorder, or maybe the port on the camcorder was already flaky and on its way out. As you may recall from my past video, it would sometimes flash on and off when first connecting. At this point, I was stuck, as I don't have any other camcorder, so I ended up going on eBay and purchasing another one just to finish making this video. It was described as fully working, but when I received it, there were clearly issues with the tape mechanism, as it made grinding noises whenever loading a tape, and when I tried to play a tape, it would immediately air out and told me to eject it. The same tape plays fine in the original camcorder, but I can't use that one because the firewire port is faulty. So for the rest of this video, we'll have to make do with what we have. Now I'll show you the process of installing a FireWire card in your PC, since your PC likely won't have one. The card I bought off Amazon is from Lynx Tech and uses a PCIe 1X interface. Inside the box I found they included a 6-pin to 4-pin FireWire cable, and then inside this anti-static bag is the card itself. On the outside of the card we have two 6-pin and one 4-pin FireWire 400 connectors, and on the inside we have another port which could be used to connect to a port on the front of your PC case if you had one which wasn't connected. There's also a Molex power connector, 
but in this case, we won't need to do anything with that. Also included in the box is a smaller bracket in case you're using a low profile PC. So now let's install it. First shut down and unplug your PC, then open the cover and locate an available slot. You'll either need to unscrew or remove a cover that allows you to remove this blank plate, and then you'll be able to slot in the new Firewire card. Close the plate or screw the card in, close the cover to your PC, and power it up. Your PC should automatically detect the card and install any required drivers. You can confirm this by opening your device manager and looking in the IEEE section. In my case, we can see both the built-in firewire interface as well as the card we just installed. You'll then need to install WinDV or HDV Split depending on the footage that you're trying to capture, but another option I recently found is by installing the Windows Live Essentials 2012. This package of software contains one called Photo Gallery, which actually does a great job of walking you through the process of capturing the tape and seems to support both DV and HDV tapes. I also often get asked if you can use software like OBS to make the camcorder appear as a virtual webcam for live streaming, and although I wasn't able to get OBS to detect it, I did have success with another app called SplitCam. I couldn't get the built-in mic on the camera to pass through, but you can always select a different source like a USB microphone for audio. If you have troubles, one tip I learned from someone in the comments in my last video is to try unplugging any webcams or disabling any other video devices from the device manager as they could conflict and try and take priority over your camcorder. I also noticed that sometimes the name of the camcorder would show up as an input, but it wouldn't actually work. However, the one named Microsoft DV Camera and VCR would work. So if you run into issues, make sure to try all available options. Once you've captured your tapes, I recommend using a flash drive or external hard drive to copy the video off the old PC and then transfer it to your modern computer for any necessary editing or transcoding the MP4, which will be faster and easier than using the old computer you use to do the captures. This process is definitely more challenging than the past processes I've shown, but since Apple discontinued the only working adapters to make this process work, this will likely be the way that most of you will need to follow going forward. I hope you found this video useful, and if you did, please take a moment to like and subscribe. You can also use the thanks button to contribute directly to me, as these videos cost me money and take a lot of time to create, so I greatly appreciate anything you can offer to help me in return. And if you need any of the cables or the firewire card I showed you in this video, you can find affiliated Amazon links in the video description. Your price stays the same, but a small commission may come back to me on anything you buy from Amazon, as long as you first click one of my links. If you've run into any issues, you can leave them in the comments and I'll try my best to assist you. Again, I thank you for your time and support, and I hope you have a great day.